I'm in the process of moving, so for the next little bit, videos are going to be coming from a disembodied voice. But if you're a fan of my voice not being disembodied, I've been posting to TikTok recently with the username at thegatherers underscore Harrison. Feel free to follow along as it functions much more as my rough notes for my more thought out videos that I'll be posting here. One thing I've been talking about a lot there recently is how powerful uncommon commanders can be. I've repeated this a bunch on this channel, but it boils down to a phrase, simple but powerful. These cards are simple enough that you can hand them to someone who has played magic for only five days, but they're powerful enough that they could easily be used to beat someone who's been playing magic for five years. And that's part of the reason I find them so enticing. They're so good at being strong cards while also being approachable for new players, which is why I've created a list of 10 commanders for new players. And these aren't only good if you're new to commander, but I think these are also useful commanders to make if you're trying to get a friend into commander. I'll be going over commanders in no real order. They're going to be simple enough to understand right away for new players, but are still decently strong. You aren't sacrificing power for simplicity here. We'll start out with one I return to every time I think of the phrase simple but powerful in Tatiova Benthic Druid. In Commander, ramp and card advantage are the lifeblood of the format. This is what separates decks from being borderline playable and being all stars in the format. So when you take a commander and place it on the vein between the two, you're in for something really strong and Tatiova is just that. She's quite possibly the strongest uncommon legend while also being one of the easiest to understand. And whenever I play a deck with a land theme, I like running three types of cards. You have the extra land cards, the ones that say you can play an additional land this turn. You have the fetch lands. These can be pricey, but you only really need any land that says sacrifice and search your library for a land to put onto the field. And then I like to run cards like Ramming Up Excavator, which say we can play lands from our graveyard. So now we can play our Evolving Wilds over and over and over again and grab lands from our deck. And each time we do this, Tatiova will draw us a card for each land that hits the board. Another big name when it comes to Uncommon Legends is Sir Conrad the Grim. Everyone and their mother were talking about this card when it came out in Eldraine is a powerful card, and the only thing really holding it back from being good to new players is that it has so much text. This does mean that nothing should be misinterpreted though, but I also really like it because it opens you up to a first potential combo deck. Combo decks are fun and rewarding, but can also be a little bit of a headache to throw together in a deck. But here, Sir Conrad is part of a bunch of two card combos we can throw in this deck and consistently hit. Cards like Forever Young, which have been considered draft chaff for a long time, suddenly become game winners with Sir Conrad. But if you want to make it just a value graveyard build, there are ton of cards for that too. And if you want this to be an aristocrats deck, there's that too. I started this list as a love letter to uncommon commanders, but there are a decent amount of rare commanders that are still simple but really strong. I think one of the best ways to introduce someone to the format of commander is Krinko Mob Boss. There's no way quite as good to introduce someone to the chaos that is commander as allowing them to tap to create 100 goblin tokens. And there's so much you can have with those tokens. I really like melting people's faces off with Perforos. There's nothing quite like it. With goblins, you're also introduced to tribal decks. And with tribal decks, you get lords, which is always a great way to take advantage of a bunch of tokens by pumping them up. And then you're gonna have so many bodies, we might as well sacrifice a few to gain different benefits, whether it can be mana or drawing a couple cards. If these past two decks have interested you, and you don't know which one to pick between, may I suggest the Commander Abomination of Lanoir. With this, you can get that fun graveyard theme while also getting to fully commit to a tribe. Goblins and Elves have been in Magic forever, so this means you get a bunch of really great cards for cheap in this deck. And black isn't normally an elf color, but it gets it every now and then, but it's more often just green. But there are some elves that you can only play in a deck that has black in it. And this also means you can play black green cards like a removal, which is always something you should be running more of in Commander. But maybe tribal isn't for you. Maybe you'd rather gain a bunch of life. Well, maybe Vito Thorn of the Dusk Rose is for you. A problem with a lot of life gain decks is that you might get to a million billion life, but you have no real way to win. Well, Vito wins for you. There are tons of cards with the same effect, so now one life can mean everyone loses five. And there's even some really simple combo potential. There are also tons of ways to take advantage of massive life totals. But what if black isn't the way you like to play magic? May I offer you Chalarasa Moon Dancer? Soul Sisters is a long time special in magic, and it's easy to gain a bunch of life in white. One card that might go under the radar is Sunscorch Region. One of the best ways to keep up with even the biggest tables is by basing your growth off of what your opponents are doing. So not only is this big dragon getting bigger, but so is your life total, and so is Trail Arasa. Not to mention getting bigger off of gaining life is a tried and true way of being a really strong card. And then being able to scry cards off the top of our library every time we gain life is a great way to set ourselves up for future success. But if this sounds interesting, but life gain isn't for you, Hamza is a ridiculously powerful commander that if it wasn't in 
Commander Legends, I swear this card would be rare, but still functions as a super approachable and simple card for new players. Stuff gets discounted when stuff has counters. It also really helps that counters have gotten a lot of support over the last decade, and will probably get consistent support until Magic the Gathering dies. This is also a commander that's easy to make kind of modal. You could build Hanza for about 50 bucks, and another Hanza deck for about 500 bucks. It feels like every set or so, we get an all-star card for this deck. And then every once in a while, they make it one of the themes of the set, and you get a more fleshed out version. It's a lot of fun, and as I keep talking about it, it makes me want to build Hamza more and more. Hamza is from Commander Legends, so they were made with Commander in mind, which transitions to my next commander in Wyleth, who was the face commander of one of the commander decks that came out in Commander Legends. I tweeted out not too long ago that I was surprised how this card is so strong while only being 50 cents. I called it the best Boros commander. And besides a few examples, I stand by it. And when it comes to those other commanders people mentioned, none of them are nearly as simple and new player friendly as Wyleth. I said earlier when talking about Tatiova that when you get a commander deck that cares about ramp or card advantage, you have a commander that is going to be inherently really powerful. I think Wyleth proves this point even more because he's in Boros and despite Watsi making new cards to make red and white pattern commander, it still leaves a little bit to be desired. And Wyleth can fill our hand really easily. Speaking of filling your hand, my next commander is Queza, who can be taken in a bunch of ways, but I think ultimately has to have a root in drawing a bunch of cards. Seriously, you can play wheels, you can play cycling, you can play life gain. These aren't hard decks to teach to new players, but they can all be super powerful. I'm personally a fan of just playing a bunch of cards that will draw us a bunch of cards, like Nezahal, or taking advantage of drawing cards in other ways, like Ominous Seas. My final commander that is great for newer players is Adeline. There's a lot of text here compared to some of the other cards, but it's still fairly easy to understand. She is as strong as the number of creatures you control, and whenever you attack, you get a body going at everybody. I kind of touched on this earlier, but one of the best, most epic feelings is just having a massive board. This is Commander. You have your legion, and you're gonna declare war. And Mono White is definitely the way to go about this. And Adeline is definitely both the commander to make sure you have a bunch of creatures, but also takes advantage of how many creatures you're going to have. There might be some concern about white in Commander, but white isn't the same color it was five years ago. You can play white in Commander and actually get off the ground. I don't keep too many decks on hand, but I think it's important to keep a deck to lend to newer players. Even if they already have a deck and you offer it, this way they can test out what it's like to play blue in Commander when they normally play green. This also functions really well as a good go-to deck in case you've had a few too many adult beverages. So commanders for newer players, do you have any suggestions? Make sure you leave them in the comments. If you like this video, leave it a like, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe for more commander content. Thanks for watching, and as we say around here, don't forget to bolt your birds.